everyone, welcome to Jason Explains Things. If you like Chevy Colorados, you clicked on the right thumbnail. We have an awesome video for you today. If you watch my channel, you've seen Chris before and his awesome 2021 Chevy Colorado ZR2 Bison, but you have not yet seen this beauty right here. This is Nate Ham from AEV, and this is the ultimate Colorado ZR2. And we are going to compare both these trucks today. All right, Nate, it's great to meet you. If you could just introduce yourself uh, and what you brought today. Thank you for that, Jason. I'm Nate from American Expedition Vehicles, and here I brought my uh, upfitted Chevy Colorado ZR2 Bison. This is actually done inside their Michigan plant and has a few more things that are not typically found on the regular CR2 Bison that comes from Chevy. I'm gonna jump behind the camera and we're gonna get a detailed up close view of both these trucks. Take it away guys, I'm gonna stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Nate, hey, thanks for reaching out to yeah. us today and, and bringing this out so we can see, uh, so I can see what I need to do to mine. First, I think let's let's go over you a little bit. What's your position with the company? Yeah, so I'm Nate Ham. I'm the Western Territorial Parts Sales Manager for American Expedition Vehicles. So what I do is basically, if you buy a stock ZR2 Bison and you want to outfit it with these parts, you give me or one of our other guys a call to uh, to buy those things. Yeah. Back in the 2017 SEMA, I think it was when we released uh, a desert tan Chevy Colorado. And then we, we kind of kept it under wraps for quite a while because we we're actually going through the design phase of making these parts for it. So when it was Chevy uh, approached us, it was a great opportunity for us to learn more things about like how to design a vehicle from an OE uh, design yes. performance. Yeah, absolutely. That was something that when we did the one year review and we talked about the Bison and all that stuff, that was one thing I forgot to mention and somebody brought it up in the comments, which is really cool. The fact that you guys did work with Chevy from the ground up, basically, you know, upfitting the ZR2 into the Bison, you did things like crash testing, you did heat testing, you did all that stuff, you know, making sure the airflow went through the bumper, you know, things that you wouldn't normally get from a standard uh, aftermarket bumper manufacturers. All right, so without further ado, I think we're gonna break into these trucks. We're gonna do a brief overview of this one. I know we've already seen it, but if you have any questions, please feel free, and then we're gonna get on to the big guy. So yeah, 2021, ZR2 Bison. So just a quick overview. We did a performance exhaust on it. We did some lighting upgrades. You know, we replaced the halogens that are not great from the factory with these awesome Baja designs. We've got a switch system in there. We did some Overland comms. We have a really cool Midland uh, radio in there, which is great for off-road. Uh, we have the lower center tube bumper on here. Uh, that's a little bit different color from yours. I liked it because it integrated with the gray on my truck really well. And then around back, we have the vertical tire carrier also from AEV. And the leveling kit. Yes, the recent addition. We have an inch and a quarter GM Performance leveling kit on this guy to uh, accommodate larger tires, hopefully, in the future. So That's we'll good. see. Yeah, yeah. So I see you got the gunmetal version of our front bumper bull bar. We're on, a, on this vehicle here, we have the, the anthracite version of it. The Bison is awesome. You can get it from the showroom just like that. But this is really something special. This is where you take your Bison, you take it to AEV, and they do the works, basically. So we're going to go over some big differentiators between this truck uh, as opposed to my truck and see what else you get with the upfit. So Nate, what do we got starting with the front here? Yeah, so right off the bat, the first thing you're going to notice is that we have our, our bull bar, which is similar to Chris, which he changed out uh, on his truck. Then we have our winch mount kit, which be able to put a Warren 9.5 actually inside this front bumper, which is a nice clean way to, to hide it. Part of the winch kit that uh, AEV provides is a solenoid relocation kit, which brings it up high, uh, all the electronics, correct? Because you don't want them down there in the water and in all the other elements. That's true too. Uh, one of the good things about having the, the solenoid pack inside the engine bay is you have your electronics up higher, so you don't have to worry about uh, getting them flooded when being down low. Or it's just a clean install and you can easily get to your uh, your winch controller port where you gotta plug it in. So as we're getting around to the side, I did notice you have some really cool, and I believe this is upfit specific. Uh, I see the American Expedition vehicles across the top there. We have some really cool AEV logos here. Yeah, that's right. The decals you get on the hood and on the side of the vehicle, along with the black badging and then the windshield banner, uh, those are specific parts to the upfit package. It kind of sets it apart from uh, your like a la carte builds to an actually in-house factory build. We actually put a build plaque in the door frame also to show like which one in the series of the builds this is. This is actually one of our earliest ones. I think actually this is the first one that we actually built. Uh, it's dated back in October of 2018, and this is wow. 001 of 2018. Oh, so wow. That's awesome. That's awesome. I noticed you also have another little plaque here. You have the diesel bison. So I'm excited to see 
We might do a little bit of uh, a little bit of road testing later between the AEV Upfit package and mine, uh, and I also uh, am looking forward to seeing how the diesel drives versus the gas. So very very cool. Yeah, that was one of the big things that uh, Chevy did when they came out with the Chevy Colorado was they introduced the basically the baby Duramax or the four cylinder Duramax, and they have a small diesel engine inside of a, a pickup truck, it gives you a tremendous amount of torque and, and an extended range when it comes to people that are traveling off road and overlanding. So on this truck, like typically, uh, you can see around town, you know, lower speeds about 22 miles per gallon. Oof, nice. I, uh, uh -huh. Hey, hey. <laughs> on 35. On 35s, exactly. That's what he's not saying, which is amazing. That's really, yeah. really cool. Which yeah. is impressive because uh, a similar Jeep Wrangler to this, you're probably looking at like 15 miles per gallon. I'm, I'm not sure what you're getting when on your stock. Uh, you nailed it. Uh, <laughs> okay. 15 miles per gallon, yep. Yeah, so when we move on to the side here, you can really see the benefit when we go to the high mark fender flare by being able to stick these 35 inch tall tires underneath the vehicle. So yeah, I mean, it looks incredible. The, obviously the high mark fender flares are to cover a fairly tremendous amount of trimming that you have to do on these wheel wells to fit 35s in on the Colorado specifically. But what I'm amazed by is just like how factory it looks. I mean, I was I was sneaking my head in there earlier. I mean, you still have the, the fender liners in there. It's all tucked in. It, it, it looks, I mean, you're a Jeep guy. You, you've you seen the the Cherokees that are all slashed to fit the giant tires in and things like that. And you can tell, but this looks, I mean, it looks like it was made this way, which is really pretty incredible. And I also noticed that you have the AEV Crestone wheels on here. And then you have these amazing 35 inch, looks like BF Goodrich, are these KM3s? That's, they are. That's correct. Yep. And these Crestone wheels, they're actually uh, pretty amazing to think about. Uh, these actually have our, our protection rings on them. Uh, so if you do scuff this edge here, you can just go ahead and replace that ring, or if you just need to touch up paint it either way. But then also this wheel can be ran as a true bead lock. That's what I thought, yeah. I like the bison wheels a lot. I'm not gonna lie, but <laughs> these look pretty good. <laughs> they yeah. look pretty good. Yeah, so on the back of the vehicle, we install these Baja Designs backup lights, give you a little more off or light off road for when you're backing up. Yeah, and they're insane. I mean, you'll if you guys look back, you'll see the lighting video we did on our truck where we really demoed those, uh, you know, off-road and, and the amount of light they throw is crazy. Uh, you went with the clear lights on these. I did the ambers on mine, but it's the same thing. Uh, it's really, really nice. And those are all specific AEV brackets designed to fit the Baja designs and a couple other. I think you guys support rigid industry lights as well and a couple of other yeah, ones. Yeah, that, so. that, that's right. It's basically anything that's a, a four inch cube or right. is what a, a falls right. into. And guys, I got to be honest, I love the Montana license plates. I'm very nostalgic for Montana. I went to college there and uh, I miss it. I miss it a little bit. Absolutely. Yeah, AEV <laughs> started in. in in Montana. There it is, Chris. <laughs> that one might be coming up soon. I, uh, I haven't been able to stop looking at it. It looks really good on this truck. So this, of course, is the AEV snorkel or high, high level air intake, whatever you would call it, because it's, it's really not so much for fording rivers as people normally think of when they associate a sn snorkel. It's more for getting clean air up high when you're on the trail, correct? Yeah, that's correct, because uh, over here in the, the dry side of Washington State, you get a lot of dust, especially yes. when you're following another person in a convoy. Chris, I can speak to that a little bit. I remember uh, following you on the Bethel Ridge trip, and I, I went out, <laughs> when I got home, I, the first thing I did was check my air filter, and it was disgusting. There might have been a reason I tried to lead as much as possible on that. <laughs> <laughs> and I know you have this. This is the standard. I think they also make a, uh, I can't remember what it's called, like a cyclone yep, pre-air filter that, that goes on there as well. Yeah. Yeah, that actually is kind of pulled over from the industrial side of uh, air cleaner. Okay. There's a, there's a propeller inside there, which actually will whisk the, the dust and particles out of the air oh, and wow. kicks it out the back before providing clean air into the air box. Nice. And can you Makes flop sense. that around? I think, Chris, you said that. Yeah, I see a lot right? of people that, you know, if you don't have the cyclone cleaners, a lot of guys will kind of flip this around if it's extra dusty. I don't know if you get any extra benefit from that, but I've seen a lot of guys do that on the trail. So the reason why this is ran forward like this, like you're, you're already higher, so you're getting a lot cleaner air because of that. If you flip it around, um, you, you you would start having suffer or you, you'll start suffering a performance of your engine. Because where, it's not forcing air in, yeah, correct? Yeah, air is not getting forced in going down the tube to your air box, which is a lot longer travel time, but also the air whisking past it, you might provide a suction um, 
pulling air from the engine itself. Gotcha, gotcha. So maybe just one of those trail myths that isn't exactly what you want to do. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. hey, that's good information either way. Yeah. One of the things that people get concerned about is like water uh, from rain when you're driving down the road and you, you worry about flooding out your engine. Right. But the way this uh, cone is designed, all the water gets forced to the back of the air intake and then weeps out the holes on the back side here. Oh, nice. I didn't even know there were, there were some drains on the back of the, the top cone. That's really, really cool. With our raised air intake uh, snorkel on here, uh, you can see how it plums into the factory air box. Yeah, yeah. Us utilizing the space between the, the frame and the outer fender, and it comes in cleanly. It really does, really does. And yeah, it, it looks like the, the air intake is very, very similar in location on the, on the uh, gas vehicle as well. So yeah, having it pipe in right through the fender, that's gonna be kind of a fun install. I'm kind of excited to, uh, to do that, piping it through there. Another one of the things that we've done in our outfit shop was we were able to re-gear this truck into 410s uh, to be able to turn these VIC 35s so you don't have a loss of performance from starting at a stoplight or, or driving around town. That makes sense. That's pretty crucial for these trucks from what I understand. Anytime you go into bigger tires on the Colorado specifically, I don't know how it works diesel versus gas, uh, but definitely jumping from 31s to 35s, I imagine with either truck, you would want to re-gear to just get that, that pep back. So yeah. yeah that, that's true. It gets you back in the correct power band which would mi this mimics the stock vehicle. Nice, nice. Well, uh, if we can, I would love to get in and see how it drives on the 35 versus my gas on 31s. Yeah, I can't wait to hear what your opinion is versus a, a stock bison to this. I haven't had the opportunity to drive a stock bison, so I'd like to hear your feedback. Awesome, man, sounds great. I'm excited, let's, let's do it. All right, are you gonna hop in or what? Let's go. I thought I was gonna drive. Oh no, you're in the back seat, buddy. Oh, yep. this sucks. <laughs> All right, starting off. Here we go. I mean, you have the, the extra torque of the diesel for sure, which you can immediately feel. I mean, even with the 35s, it's, it takes off just fine. I was, uh, I don't know what I was expecting with the sure. 35s, but honestly, it. it it doesn't drive that dissimilarly from from mine so that's i mean that's great i think yeah i mean for on-road manners on a truck on 35s which admittedly i haven't driven one before so i didn't know what to expect but uh yeah it's it's great well a lot of people's concerns a lot of times when you go to a bigger tire you know how's this going to affect my daily driving is this going to be exactly you know killing a field mileage or is it going to be uncomfortable to drive and with this package of keeping basically stock suspension, it makes it a nice riding vehicle. It gives you plenty of your own clearance on the road because of that. Yeah, you didn't have to do a four, <laughs> four inch lift or something like that where you're kind of <laughs> teetering. Exactly. Well, you can have a trade on there and have a higher center of gravity by yeah. keeping this nice and low and getting the 35s on it. You're going to be able to get over the obstacles just yeah. fine. I like that philosophy quite a bit. Keeping the center of gravity low, doing the lift and the tire down low instead of doing the whole suspension thing. I think that's a, that's a good way to do it. But one thing to mention, uh, what you had talked about earlier, Nate, is the, the visibility of the snorkel. I don't think we have oh, a camera yeah. on that one, but it's, yeah, I see what you're saying. It does stick out there, but not, not bad. It doesn't get in the way really of anything at all. Um, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, I've definitely been keeping an eye on that because uh, of reasons. So, <laughs> yeah, no, that looks really good. So you definitely lose like a, a tad bit, but the way we tucked it back to follow the A-pillar, mm -hmm. you, you may look like lost an inch, maybe an inch or two or something. Not much. Well, guys, that was an awesome way to spend an afternoon. Final thoughts, Chris, we have to share a microphone. A lot of fun, a lot of fun to drive, a lot of fun to experience. Thank you so much for bringing it out yeah, so we can take a look, a little compare and contrast. Uh, a shopping list, you know, <laughs> things like that. But it was a lot of fun. And Nate, thank you very much. Thanks for reaching out. That was a lot of fun. And uh, guys, look for more videos uh, on the Colorado, on Chris's Colorado. Maybe we might see you again in the future. Well, maybe. Turns out we live close by, so there's a lot of fun around here to go have. So anyway, everyone, please like, share, subscribe. Check out the Overland DIY playlist for more uh, off-roading videos for Colorados, Toyotas, and uh, who knows, you know, what, what vehicle do you have? Come out and hang out with us and maybe we'll shoot videos about your truck too. All right guys, until next time, don't forget to do it yourself. That's it? Nice, yeah. We did it. Well done.